Shortly after my comprehensive in-depth review of the eSwap S and X, Thrustmaster reached out and said, you slick-talking controller bad boy, you did mention the eSwap XR with the swappable module that's a little steering wheel. Would you like to get your nitty-gritty gamer mitts on that gamepad as well? And the answer was, of course. I didn't even have time to type it out. I just, you know, barked an instant yes back almost like an allergic reaction, an opportunity for another controller in the gamer heaven, and it has unique features that other gamepads don't have, and it's colorful, a no brainer, it needs, it, it belongs here. This is its new home and it belongs on the wall. Now as this gamepad shares almost all of the same core features as the eSwap X, a lot of those components are identical, such as the D-pad and triggers, so I'm gonna skip over those sections of the review, but I will be linking down in the description below, the eSwap S and X review, which can fill in any gaps in information, and also it's a good way for me to direct you to a video that I put a lot of time in. To. The biggest question is naturally going to be what are the differences between the eSwap X and this newer and slightly more expensive XR. It has one major key feature that makes it not only unique, but very, very useful for racing games, and that is going to be, since this is a modular controller, one of the replacement parts that this controller comes with is a little racing wheel. Now, this is a very interesting approach, and I think it's best handled by Thrustmaster, considering they have a lot of experience with racing sim wheels, as well as controllers, so bringing the two together with a swappable module to kind of bridge the gap between, mm, I don't have the room or money for an actual racing sim setup, but you can get a lot more immersion and control your vehicle with an actual steering wheel as opposed to an analog stick. This thing's pretty amazing. Let's get into it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've, We've tested, tested almost 100, 100 custom and premium controllers, controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes. This controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. As for the packaging and included accessories, starting at the box, you can definitely tell this is Forza Horizon theme as there is a slew of pink and this is a very colorful presentation. You might be wondering, what are you holding in your hand there? That is the Microsoft Limited Edition Forza controller, which I have showcased on the channel. This is one of those vertical short form videos that the kids like, but she got showcased. You will have two clear wafer stickers on the side that need to be sliced. You do also have a pink pull tab over here. Very nice. And this is also magnetized, snaps your box shut little satin or cloth pull tab on the top. If you want to pause the box to read some of the key features, you may do so now. And three of the key features Thrustmaster wants you to know this controller has is the racing wheel module. That is the key feature of this controller. You're also gonna have the mini sticks, which are rated for 2 million actuations and are supposed to be freakishly accurate, about 66% more accurate than the predecessors. I have done in-depth testing of those thumbstick modules on the eSwap SNX during those comprehensive reviews that is linked in the description below. But yes, they were incredibly well calibrated and performed very well. And the Facer action buttons are mechanical or digital switches rated for a tap life cycle of 5 million clicks. And to get you hooked on one of the most powerful street drugs out there, you are going to get a free month of Game Pass. They expect once you get that first taste, you numb your gums with the first couple of downloads, you're going to be at Phil Spencer's doorstep. Take my money! It actually might be time for an updated Game Pass video on the channel. It's been about a year since I showcased the service. Is it really worth the bang for buck and all the hubbub, the hype in the gaming community? Opening up the box, very nice presentation as you are going to have not laser cut foam, but with all the Thrustmaster controllers that I have personally tested, they have this very nice velvety clothy material. Clothy, that's a real word. Look it up. Your documentation is going to be in here, including that trial to game pass. You can take it. Just pause it. Just type it in. One of you got it. I know you did. Presentation is the name of the game here. We have this little foam block over here, which can also be used for pedicures. Pop that over the old paws and get to painting. Kidding. It's actually to keep your thumbsticks from getting damaged during shipping. Then you're going to have the module over here, which is what you came for, which is what you clicked on the video for. And as soon as you start rotating it, you immediately understand why this is kind of cool. It has resistance like a real steering wheel, snaps back to its neutral resting position. I will say it's pretty short from lock to lock. We're going to talk about that later. I wish there was a switch from 90 to 270 degree mode for some of those slow speed maneuvers. This little box right here, you guessed it, it's going to have accessories. There is a cutout on each side, makes getting this out very easy. PDP, if you're watching the video, take a little note here on Thrustmaster's pack 
packaging. This is how you remove an included accessory without damaging it. Well-designed packaging here, prominently. And even the entry-level eSwap S has the same premium packaging with this nice velvety tray, rubberized pads up here, opens up from the side with a velvety pull tab. Thrustmaster does the packaging correctly. Nice unboxing experience. Now, just like the eSwap S and X, you're gonna have a couple of plastic dust covers that need pulled off. And you can't really tell because there isn't a pull tab sticking out, but this is actually a sticker or cover as well. So if you're thinking, wow, there's a bunch of scratches on this little trim piece here. There is actually a little sticker. Get your fingernail under there, get it started. Boom. In that box, there's a silica gel packet. Dispose of that properly. You are gonna have your included 10 foot braided cable. No Velcro tie back that you're gonna keep, just a bread bag tie to keep it all held together. As this is a wired controller, you are gonna be using this cable constantly. And don't worry if you do break this cable. I know this looks like a proprietary clip and it kind of is. It has these troughs that guide into a track and snap into place. But as long as you have a micro USB cable laying around that's small enough to fit into this port or hole, you can shove whatever you want in there and it will work. So don't think if this cable gets crimped, cut, broken, that you're completely screwed and have to buy a, a new proprietary cable that's like 60 bucks from Thrustmaster or something. Just go grab that $7 cable. It's sitting in your drawer. It'll work. But as for the included cable, it is relatively lightweight and flexible. No dust covers on the USB-A or micro USB side, but this is a pretty high quality cable. Since this controller doesn't include a carrying case, it does come with a little baggie to hold all of your loose accessories. I do like the solution. I think it's better than just having loose accessories like this Thrustmaster tool laying around. This card is letting you know, hey, update to the latest firmware, do that initial update or your controller might be janky for you. This one's reminding you, the software that you just did that update on, you can do other stuff too. Thrustmapper X, download it, please. Give us better reviews because our average is a 2.4 on the Microsoft store. That rhymed. Instruction manual with these languages. None of these are my native tongue goes in the trash. Instruction manual with these languages. English. I'll take it. And this piece of paper I assumed was a quick start guide. It actually isn't. It's your regulatory and warranty information and then it has the contents of the box displayed in a large picture. Swapping the modules on an eSwap SRX is freakishly easy as they're just held on with magnets. You pull them off like that. So it's not quite as secure as the DualSense Edge, which has those metal levers to keep the modules in place, but this will work as you're at no risk of pulling up on the thumbstick modules in game. As for getting the D-pad out, you can get a fingernail up underneath the edges, or if you have the tool handy, the included thrust mapper tool, you can slide in this end, turn and pull, Boop. And that makes getting the D-pad module out much easier. Now, cosmetically, I think the eSwap S looks okay. I think the eSwap X looks good. And I think the eSwap XR looks amazing. This limited edition Forza 5 theme looks fantastic with the pink, which extends all the way to the triggers and bumpers, the lettering on the rear buttons, the profile and remapping buttons, as well as control of the 3.5 millimeter block. And there is a flat matte pink inside of the thumbstick bases as well. This little chin or center section looks fantastic, despite the fact it is high gloss and will collect fingerprints and micro scratches like nobody's business, but it does look really sick. Ugh. See? Holy moly. Oh yeah, that's a smudge right there. Cosmetically, I do think this is a beautiful controller. However, these side grips appear as if they are a rubberized material and they are just slick plastic. It would have looked way cooler and also felt a whole hell of a lot better providing more grip if these were actual tire tread. If this was rubberized, then maybe appeared like tire tread. Nice soft, supple rubber silicone material. But luckily, since these are modular, you can pop off these side panels, which are magnetized and get yourself replacements. Over here on the Thrustmaster website, and you have to be very careful when you're diddling around with Google with Masters of Thrust, words along that key phrase, you want to be very specific here. The thrust that we're talking about here is going to be obviously flight and racing simulator equipment as well as controllers. They've been doing it for years. This hamburger drop down is going to do two things for us. It's going to flash bang us with this freakishly red screen, and it's going to take us to controllers, which is where we like to hang out. The eSwap S and X have had their due day in court. Judgment has already been, I've already slapped the gavel down on that. Both fantastic controllers, but if you want in-depth, comprehensive, blow by blow coverage linked in the description below is the side-by-side -side tandem review of these controllers. I forgot how slow and laggy the Thrustmaster website is. Uh... There it is. Okay. I'm not sure if it's optimization with WordPress or whatever, however they built their website, but it is the slowest, laggiest website I have personally ever experienced. I've tried three different browsers now, Chrome, Opera GX, and Firefox. And you have to click and then kick back. You click, you just hang out for a while. Insane. Pull up a cot. Their website's laggy as hell. You see configure down here and you might be thinking, whoa, do they have like a custom builder or something? No, this takes you to some of their color pop kits. I'll continue to call them that. 
that. These color kits over here, which I have an entire video reviewing this version here, and I do strongly recommend picking these up from Amazon. Nothing against the Thrustmaster website, just buy these from Amazon. And as far as durability, there is a lifespan of 2 million actuations on the mini sticks, which are the thumbsticks that are included on the eSwap S, X, and this XR as well. And the face or action buttons are also rated for a tap life cycle of 5 million clicks. Not bad, not bad at all. That's more than the 3 million advertised from Razer, but less than the 10 million from AIM. Much, much more than the, well, non-existent rating of membrane switches, which can jam to high hell at any time. Other than just lasting longer in the sack, they also give you a 64% faster and more pleasure with these mechanical or digital switches. They're 64% faster to actuate than membrane switches, and you only have to press in these dang old darn buttons 0.01 inches or 0.3 millimeters to actuate them. Lickety split, rip your fit. Just like the eSwap S and X, you are going to be able to use the Thrust Mapper X software to control this controller. I have about a five minute step by step tutorial or walkthrough of that software in the eSwap SNX review, which is linked in the description below. Now, I was very curious how that steering wheel module is going to perform in Gamepad Tester for my own knowledge. And also that information isn't available on YouTube yet. And we have an answer now. It performs exactly like the left analog stick. So as I move the left analog stick up and down, you see typical movement in Gamepad Tester. Then I move my thumb down here and there's going to be zero vertical movement whatsoever, but you are going to have the full horizontal control of the left analog stick. And it doesn't matter what socket you slot that into, you're still going to have control of what would be the left analog stick, so steering in a game. And if you want to see the most awkward circularity test ever, get ready for it. Bam, an average error of 0.0%. There's the actual thumbstick accuracy inside of the circularity test. It's still very good though. And another piece of knowledge for us in Gamepad Tester with one of these Thrustmaster modular controllers, this is what happens when you remove any of the modules. It fully deactivates all three of the sockets on the PCB. So both the analog sticks and the D-pad will become fully useless until you socket all three. And then they pretty much instantaneously pop back to life when you click it in. Over here in the introduction of Forza Horizon 5, you've seen it a million times and it never gets old. It's always beautiful to to this day, especially on PC. My warmest and dearest apologies for the audio balance, the game and mic blend over the next couple of clips. I had one of my faders or sliders on my mixer hocked to the high hells, but it's good. It actually simulates us at a real track day. We're yelling over the cars and whatnot. Audio quality is still crisp as hell. It's just the gameplay's overpowered my voice a bit. It's kind of loud. A long time there, a little air effect gap. Due to three factors, this is going to give you so much more control than a typical analog stick, thumbstick, or joystick. The most important aspect is first of all going to be it fully removes your vertical inputs. So it's just worrying about, turn down that game sound in the background. It is only focusing on your horizontal input. So left and right, which is a big downside to using a thumbstick is that you have all of this vertical input that is doing nothing for steering your vehicle and just confusing your brain. Next up, there is noticeably more resistance to this module than the thumbsticks. So if you go back and forth between steering with the thumbstick module and then using the racing wheel module, it seems about 30 to 40% more resistance and that is definitely noticeable and gives you a lot more control to steering. Behind the wheel of a Corvette Stingray and I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more wheel time if you will. I almost said stick time but we are completely removing the stick from the equation. Hitting the apex of the corner there, no issue. I'm not even looking at the road. I'm looking at you right now, eye to eye, cornea to cornea. We got a low and slow flyer here. I don't think he's cleared for landing here. Very easy to maintain a drift by counter steering just because I know exactly what that wheel is doing in comparison to a thumbstick where there's vertical input. Woo! For the eye of the storm. And I've got the eye of the tiger. Uh, I beat the game. I didn't really know what to think about the steering wheel module as nobody does until they get their hands on it. It is a game changer for sure. How this controller technology has not been invented until now, I'm not sure. I'm glad that Thrustmaster has been the one to do it. This feels uh, phenomenal. And if you can't afford or do not have the room, for a racing sim wheel. Ooh, getting a little squirrely there, back in, stepping out on me. A couple of shortcomings or areas of improvement for their next version or iteration of this racing wheel module. Don't worry about how loose my neck strap is. Class I'm racing in doesn't even require full face helmets, but I always wear my gauntlets in full face just for safety. This racing wheel module is night and day, a huge step up or upgrade over a traditional thumbstick for racing games. But a couple of tweaks that could make it just a little bit better.
Didn't even mess up my hair. That's what a can of hairspray will do for you. The rubber or silicone around the outside of the wheel is very nice. It has little distinct notches or steps which catch your finger and make it very easy to steer and very grippy. However, in the center, it's hard plastic. I would love if they had some kind of a rubberized pad or strip here, as a lot of times I found my thumb brushing across the center section and just slip sliding around. And the second and last complainer shortcoming I have with this wheel is going to be a lack of rotation. It has 95 degrees of maximum rotation from lock to lock, and that's fine. However, I did find my Myself craving a little bit more. I'm not saying you need 900 degrees or two and a half turns lock to lock just like a real car. It does come in handy in simulation games like Gran Turismo and traditional Forza, not Forza Horizon, the arcadey one, but Forza, the traditional track racing one. And I understand this controller is directly aimed at Forza Horizon and other similar arcade racing games, but it would be great if there was another mode. Perhaps you remove the module and then there was a little dip switch on the bottom that would allow a mode for around 270 degrees of rotation just to give you a little bit more control because as it is, you have there to there. That's it. There to there. So dead center, there to there. It'd be cool if you could go all the way up to like there to there, you would have so much more control. Having mentioned those two areas of improvement, this is a huge upgrade over using traditional thumbsticks. And if you don't have the room or money for a full size racing sim wheel, then this is a no brainer to pick up. Also cosmetically, I think this controller looks gorgeous. The action buttons being rated for 5 million clicks. The mini sticks are also very accurate and are rated for 2 million clicks, clicking down on L3 and R3. And the coolest thing about these Thrustmaster controllers is that they are modular. So if you get stick drift or you get bored of your layout, you can swap it all up, customize it to your liking. Now, all of my thoughts, positive and negative, carry over from the eSwap X. For example, I am not a huge fan of this rear button system, and the trigger stops simply allow too much pull when they are activated. But this is a solid wired gamepad for PC and Xbox, and this racing wheel module, until you try it, don't knock it till you try it, it makes steering cars and racing and driving games so much easier. The cheaper stripped down eSwap S has removable modules, but only to replace stick drift. The eSwap X and XR, which by the way are virtually identical controls controllers, but the XR has that little steering wheel module and is painted pink. Those are customizable, so you can swap the D-pad and analog sticks to give you the Xbox offset sticks or PlayStation symmetrical sticks. Keep in mind, when they are PlayStation symmetrical or side-by-side -side sticks, they're actually closer together by about a half inch, about a quarter inch, actually, than an actual native PlayStation controller, which takes into account that the sticks are side-by-side, -side, so they're spaced out far enough apart. And that's on virtually all of these modular swappable controllers, so like the Astro C40 and the Victor tricks BFG, any controller that allows you to do that, the thumbsticks are always closer together. So if you're an Xbox fanboy and then you pick up one of these modular controllers and you go side by side and your thumbs are clacking up against each other, causing a fire, friction Freddy or whatever, and you're like, well, how do PlayStation guys do this? It's It doesn't feel like that on a PlayStation controller. But you can change the look of the eSwap X and XR by buying those color pop kits, about $50 on Amazon. They go on sale frequently too. I was really unpleasantly surprised at the fact that these side grips weren't rubberized because in the picture, and even video reviews, they look like they're rubberized textured material, but it's just slick as snot plastic. If you're looking to pick up the latest offering from Thrustmaster in the controller department, then this is it, and it's a fantastic gamepad. However, having said that, the eSwap X, being a much, much older controller, that controller goes on sale quite frequently on Amazon and is virtually the same controller as this. Can you buy that little steering wheel module independently and pop it in your eSwap X that you already own? It's $30. A list compatibility is only for the eSwap XR, but we're going to drop this module into an eSwap X and see if it works. Well, lo and behold, if you have an eSwap X, you buy this module and drop it in and basically you have yourself an XR. Does the eSwap S work? That's the million dollar question. It sure does. So I have the eSwap S over here, which is the most budget oriented or cheapest controller in the Thrustmaster lineup currently. I should have said the eSwap lineup. They, they also have a $30 budget controller, but we're, we're not talking about that. Just but a note that needs mentioned here is you do have one less option as to where to put the steering wheel module, considering the D-pad is not removable or swappable on this controller. So you're going to have to put it where the left or right analog stick would go. Not a huge deal, but I was actually using it down here where the D-pad would go and it felt perfect. So you can't use that configuration on the S. So honestly, my recommendation is this. If you already currently own an eSwap S or X, then just buy the module because that is pretty much what I'm reviewing in this video. That is the main primary key feature. However, if you do not own a 
Thrustmaster controller currently, then the XR is definitively the one to pick up because it has all the features of the eSwap X, but comes with the racing module. The barrier to entry is pretty low as the modules are $30 on Amazon and do include free returns. If you are someone that casually plays racing games, meaning most likely on a console, on your couch, with a controller in hand, this will give you so much more control and also a more enjoyable experience from your racing games. But you definitely want a racing sim wheel, the pedals, the shifter, all the accoutrement that goes with being a racing sim sweat lord. This is linked in the description below. Drop in the comment section what you're using to play on Xbox, and I'll see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where i go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace